Yehova Elohenu Svaot, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Please fill me and lead me and cover me with your Ruach HaKodesh, that I may speak your written words with boldness to those who listen. I ask all these things in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. We'll start with the Shema. Listen in Abbe. Children of Yehovah, pay careful attention and respond. Yehovah is our power and authority. Yehovah works in unity with himself. And you shall act upon your love to Yehovah with your power and authority, with your thoughts and mind, with your entire body, and with all the muchness that you have. Yod, hey, vav, hey. Hand, behold, nail, behold. Judges chapter 11. Now, Yiftak, this brave soldier from Gilad, was the son of a prostitute. His father, Gilad, had other sons by his wife, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Yiftak away and told him, You will not inherit from our father because you are another woman's son. Then Yiftak fled from his brothers and lived in the territory of Tov, where he enlisted a gang of rowdies who would go out raiding with him. After a while, the people of Ammon made war against Israel. When the army of Ammon attacked Israel, the leaders of Gilad went to fetch Yiftak from the territory of Tov and said to him, Come and be our chief, so that we can fight the army of Ammon. Yiftak answered the leaders of Gilad, didn't you hate me so much that you forced me out of your father's house? Why are you coming to me now, when you are in trouble? The leaders of Gilad replied, there, there, Here is why we've come back to you now. If you lead us in war with the people of Ammon, you will be head over everyone leaving in Gilad. Yiftak answered them, If you bring me back home to fight the army of Ammon, and you have all defeats them for me, I will be your head. The leaders of Gilad said to Yiftak, you have always witnessed that we promise to do what you have said. Then Yiftak went with the leaders of Gilad, and the people of people made him head and chief over them. Yiftak repeated all these conditions at Mitzbah, the presence of Yehovah. Yiftak sent messengers to the king of the people of Ammon and said, What's your problem with us? Why are you invading our territory? The king of Ammon answered the messengers of Yiftak. Because Israel took away my territory when they came up from Egypt. They took everything from the Arnon to Yobach and the Yarden. Now restore it peacefully. Yiftak sent messengers again to the king of the people of Ammon with this response. Here is what Yiftak has to say. Israel captured neither the territory of Moab nor the territory of the people of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt, walked through the desert to the Red Sea, and arrived at Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom and said, To say, Please let us pass through your land. But the king of Edom wouldn't let them. He sent a similar message to the king of Moab, but neither would he. So Israel stayed at Kadesh. Then they walked through the desert around the territory of Edom and the territory of Moab past the east border of the territory of Moab, and pitched camp on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not cross the border into Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Israel sent messengers to Sichon, king of Emory, and the king of Heshbon with this message, Please let us pass through your land to our own place. But Sichon did not trust that Israel would only pass through his land, so he gathered all his people together, and pitched tent and pitched camp at Yaatz, and fought against Israel. Yehovah, the God of Israel, handed Sichon and all his people over to Israel, and they killed them. Thus, Israel possessed all the territory of the Emory who lived there. They took possession of all the territory of the Emory, from the Armon to the Yabak, and from the desert to the Yarden. So now that you have all the God of Israel expelled the Emory before the people of Israel. Do you think that you will expel us? You should just keep the territory your God, Kamash, has given you, while we, for our part, will hold on to whatever you have all our God has given us of the lands that belong to the others before us. Rather, are you better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he even pick a quarrel with Israel or fight with us? Israel lived in Heshbon and its villages in Aror, and its villages 
and in all the cities of the banks of Arnon for 300 years. Why don't you take why didn't you take them back during that time? No, I have done you no wrong, but you are doing me wrong to war against me. May you have all the judge be judged today between the people of Israel and the people of Ammon. But the king of the people of Ammon paid no attention to the message of Yitzhak sent him. Then the spirit of Yehovah came upon Yitzhak, Yitzhak, and he passed through Gilad and Manasheh, on through Mitzpah of Gilad, and from there over the people of Ammon. Yitzhak made a vow to Yehovah, If you will hand the people of Ammon over to me, then whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the people of Ammon will belong to Yehovah. I will sacrifice it as a burnt offering. So Yiftak crossed over to fight the people of Ammon, and Yehovah handed them over to him. He killed them from Aror until we reached Minit, 20 cities, all the way to Evel Kramim. It was a massacre. So the people of Ammon were defeated before the people of Israel. As Yiftah was returning to his house in Mitzpah, his daughter came dancing out to meet him with tambourines. She was his only child. He had no other son or daughter. When he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Oh no, my daughter, you're breaking my heart. Why must you be the cause of such pain to me? I made a vow to you of all, and I can't go back on my word. She said to him, Father, you made a vow to Yehovah, so do whatever you said you would do to me, because Yehovah did take vengeance on your enemies, the people of Ammon. Then she said to her father, Just do this one thing for me. Let me be alone for two months. I'll go away into the mountains with my friends and mourn, because I will die without getting married. You may go, he answered. And he sent her away for two months. She left, she and her friends, and mourned, in the mountains that she would die unmarried. After two months, she returned to her father, and he did with her what he had vowed. She had remained a virgin. So it became a law in Israel that the women of Israel would go up, go every year for four days to lament the daughter of Yiftah from Gilad. How can we learn to love our Creator after reading this interesting 11th chapter of Judges? We can aim to be a brave soldier for Yehovah. Seek Yehovah when family is cruel to you. Fight for Yehovah. Help when others need you. Lead others into victory. Trust that it is Yehovah who wins wars. Fight for what Yehovah has given you. Ask for the spirit of Yehovah to come upon you. Be slow and thoughtful before making a vow to Yehovah. Give an offering to Yehovah in return for what Yehovah gives to you. Keep your word. How can we love others as Yeshua loves us? We can help others who need you. Keep your word. How can we bear one another's burdens? We can ask for the spirit of Yehovah to come upon you and lead. Produce spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, self-control. End with the Arionic blessing, using the name. Yehovah will kneel before you presenting gifts. He will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yehovah will illuminate the wholeness of his being toward you, bringing order. And he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yehovah will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon you and will set in place all you need to be whole and complete.